All right, everybody, welcome back. We are talking about fluids today. We're going to be talking about kind of like static fluids where things aren't moving and fluids where things are flowing and everything like that. Excited to talk about this, so uh, here we go. All right, so before we talk about fluids, let's talk about states of matter. So the main states of matter that we are all aware of are solid, liquids, and gases. Of course, like there's plasma, but let's just stick to the basics. So solids have pretty much a constant shape and a constant volume, okay? Um, what that means is, you know, you can't really configure them so much. Um, so like the computer, it's the shape, it stays the same, okay? The volume of it stays the same. Liquid gases ha can ha uh, have a constant volume, but their shape can flow and change. So it's like kind of true. Uh, Liquid and gases both can be squeezed a little bit, but anyway, for the most part, they have like a constant volume, uh, but they can flow. Like if you put water into a cup, it'll take the shape of a cup. If you put it onto the ground, it'll take the shape of a puddle, and so on and so forth. Um, here's a demonstration. Uh, this demonstration kind of shows kind of how gases flow just like liquids do. So I'm just going to be playing it. It's a video that I made, so I'm just going to be playing it. Uh, I'm going to be playing it on mute, so I don't know that we can go through it better. Let's see, can I speed this up? Let me try to speed this up um, just so, anyway, because I'm narrating it. So right here, I'm just trying to make carbon dioxide here with a popular experiment we've probably all done, vinegar and baking soda. Okay, so I'm making it, there, there's my child, just letting you know, he's helping me with the experiment. Um, anyway, I did this primarily to just make carbon dioxide inside of here, okay? And some of it came out, probably flowed out, but we have carbon dioxide here. And I'm putting, um, I'm lighting a candle and, you know, this water I'm going to put inside of it. And obviously it goes away, you know, that's pretty obvious if the water flows into it and gets rid of it. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the candle into the other cup. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the gas, which flows just like a liquid does. Okay, so I'm pouring this gas and you can see it and it goes away. Okay, so this is just kind of showing that a uh, gas has the same kind of flowing properties of a liquid. We don't really think of gas as a fluid, but gas is considered a fluid. Okay, so that's the main thing I wanted to show here. Uh, differences in fluids. Liquids. Mass does not change, volume does not change, density is the same everywhere, conform to the shape of their container. Gases, mass does not change, volume can change, think about crushing a plastic water bottle. So you can squeeze gas more, uh, more than liquid. And liquid you can squeeze a bit too, but I, I don't want to get too technical. Uh, density can change, it can be compressed, uh, conform to the shape of their container. Okay, great. Uh, pause it if you want to like write that down or anything. Okay, so what is a fluid? A fluid is a material that can flow and take the form of the space it is in. Like the example I gave, you pour water into a cup, it takes the shape of a cup. You take, you pour water into the bowl, it takes the shape of the bowl, so on and so forth. On the right, we have an example of gas in a container and liquid in a container. So yeah, we can see that gas, you know, it's there, it's invisible many, many times, but it's there, doesn't, uh, there's not as much matter there. But liquid, more matter, closer together. Okay, so the main thing we're talking about uh, for this video is density. Uh, this is a good video to show that. So right here we have, I guess, three different liquids, maybe four if we consider the, the four fluids, if we have gas on top. But we have whatever this is on the bottom, which is the most dense. And then we have the second most dense thing here. And then maybe oils on top is the least dense. And then we have air, which I guess would be the least dense. Okay, But just a visual of density and how it works. The more mass something has, it goes towards the bottom. Okay, more mass? No, no, not more mass. The more dense something is. And we'll talk about what that means. <laughs> okay, so oftentimes density is confused with weight. Many people believe if something is heavy, it must also be dense. However, you can think of density in terms of the amount of space an object takes up volume and the amount of stuff that is in that space mass. Okay, so here's the formula. Uh, density is equal to mass divided by volume. 
Um, this is the variable we use for density, this is mass, and this is volume. So a way we can think about density is, for example, styrofoam. Styrofoam, if you get a large sheet of styrofoam or a large chunk of styrofoam, it could have a lot of volume, but we also know styrofoam is very light, so the mass would be very, very little. Okay, so in this case, the density would be extremely small because it has so much volume but very little mass. And that's why if you ever see um, styrofoam uh, in the water, it's just floating. But at the same time, if we consider a small rock, you know, a small rock won't have that much mass. Uh, or sorry, it won't have that much uh, volume. So it's pretty small, the volume. And the mass, you know, maybe it's not that much, but compared to the amount, the size of it, the volume of it, it can be a lot. And this is why uh, rocks are very dense and they'll sink when they go into a liquid or to water. Okay, so let's, as we do more problems, it should make more sense. Okay, here we go. There are three water bottles of different sizes. Water bottle number one, we'll call this one, uh, is filled with water and is the heaviest of the three. Water bottle number two is filled with honey and is lighter than the first one. So let's do this. Heaviest. Lighter. And water bottle number three is filled with air and weighs the least. Okay, least. Can you tell which uh, wa uh, which water bottle is the most dense? So it's a little bit confusing. We kind of don't have all the information because we don't know so much about honey. Uh, but we can maybe just kind of think about it. So some people might say, okay, since water bottle number one is the heaviest, it's going to be the most dense. But remember, density doesn't just care about the mass. Okay, there's more to density than mass. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. So if you could think about it, actually, maybe some of you guys know, like honey is a lot more dense than water. So it's actually going to be water bottle number two. So even though the whole bottle itself is lighter, um, the quantity, if we say like this speck of the honey and this speck of the water, let's say that's like the same size. Okay. Uh, if we were to weigh those two specks, uh, the honey would weigh more and that's why it would be more dense. Okay. Knowing that, let's kind of move on to the next problem or question. Uh, there are three water bottles of the same size. Water bottle number one is filled with water. Uh, water bottle number two is filled with honey. And water bottle number three is filled with air. So they're the same size, meaning they all have the same amount of volume. Which water bottle will be the heaviest? Okay. So since we know now that honey is the most dense, we should also know if they all have the same volume and honey is the most dense, water bottle number two will be the heaviest. Okay. All right. First math problem. Water has a density of about a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. If it is in a container that has a volume of 0 0.010 meter cubed, what is the mass of the water in this container? Okay, so let's look at this. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. Uh, and what are we looking for? Mass. So we should know that mass is going to be equal to the density times the volume. So let's plug this in. Density of water is 1000. Uh, volume is 0 0.01. Okay, so you know you can put into calculator if you want, and you're going to get around 10 kilograms. Okay, and that's how we can calculate. Relatively simple, just a simple algebraic ma manipulation. Okay, next one. Water has a density of a thousand kilogram per meter cubed. The water has a mass of 25 ki uh, kilograms. What is the volume of the water in meter? Uh, meter cubed. Okay, great. Uh, density is equal to mass divided by volume. So we have, oh, now what are we looking for? Volume. So we have volume is equal to mass divided by density. We don't know what volume is. That's what we're looking for. The mass is 25. 25. Density is 1000. Okay, put that into our calculators. Oops. And we get the volume is equal to 0 0.025 meter cubed. Okay. All right, moving on. 
So this is something like kind of important to know uh, when measuring, I guess. Let's say that you have a rock and you want to find its volume. You can get a container of water for which you know the volume of and put the rock in the container. Measuring how much the water rises will tell you the volume of the rock. Okay, so for example here, this water uh, has 150 something, I don't know, 150 something <laughs> uh, volume. And we put the rock in there and as we know, once we put the rock in there, it's going to go up. However much it goes up by, this will now tell us what the volume of this rock is. Okay, so that's like a simple, I guess, experiment to find how a volume is of something, especially when it has an irregular shape like this rock, it's really helpful to be able to help us find a uh, volume for these kind of random objects. Okay, moving on. There's a, this is kind of like a, you hear this kind of joke a lot, but it, it helps us with understanding density. So there's a pound of feathers and a pound of bricks. In this scenario, what do the feathers and bricks have in common? Okay, think about it and pause it if you like, but the answer is the mass. Okay, a pound of feathers and a pound of bricks have the same amount of weight or the same amount of mass. Okay, and I think we've all heard that joke before, but let's do some other ones. Uh, there's a pound of feathers and a pound of bricks. In this scenario, what does the feather have less of compared to the brick? A mass, B volume, C density, D A and B. So we should know what it's going to have less of if the density, okay? Even though there are a lot more feathers and the shape of it is a lot bigger than the bricks, uh, it's a lot less dense. And that's why even though they have the same amount of mass or the same amount of weight, um, the feathers are a lot less dense, okay? Last one here. There's a pound of feathers and a pound of bricks. In this scenario, what does the feather have more of compared to the brick? Okay, that's going to be the volume. And that should make sense. You know, this is going to be way bigger. You know, it's going to be much more fluffier and bigger while this is a lot more compact. And that's why it's a lot more dense. Okay. So it's going to have a lot more value. All right. Let's do some a bit harder problems here. Uh, there are two containers with negligible mass of the same size. Uh, container number one is filled with an unknown substance A. Container number two is filled with an unknown substance B. Container number two has four times the density of container number one. Okay, so I'm going to put four density. Okay. Um, for, for the two containers to have the same amount of mass, what needs to happen? Substance A needs to be filled up into a container that has a, a volume four times as big. Part B, substance B needs to be filled up with a container that has four uh, volume four times as big. Okay, substance B needs to be filled up with a container that has a volume two times as big. They already have the same mass. Okay, so kind of let's look at this. Uh, we know that density is equal to mass divided by volume. Okay, density is equal to mass divided by volume. So originally, this one scenario B has four times the amount of density. And if their volumes are exactly the same, that means this mass is going to be four times, uh, it's going to be increased by four. However, what we can do to have the same amount, or maybe I should, um, yeah, very good. So maybe what I can do in order to uh, have the same amount of mass here, is oh i should change this mass is equal to density over volume let me change that a little bit uh and then i'll change this mass is equal to density over volume and then we know that this has four times the amount of density so then this will have four times the amount of mass so in order for this side to have four times the amount of mass we can also change if we can't change the density of the liquid we can change the volume of the liquid to be four times more. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Uh, that's gonna be A, maybe watch it again if it didn't, but I hope that made sense. All right, I believe the last example here. There are two containers of the same size. Container number one is filled with an unknown substance A. Uh, container number two is filled with an unknown substance B. The mass of container two is eight times as great compared to container number one. 
what does this say about the density of the unknown substance compared to unknown uh, compared to unknown substance B? Uh, a substance B is eight times as dense as substance A. B substance A is four times as dense as substance B. C sub uh, substance B is four times as dense as substance A. D they have the same density. Okay, so again, density is equal to mass divided by volume. We'll do that for both sides. And we know that container number two is filled with unknown substance B. The mass of number two, container number two, is eight times as great. So this has eight times the amount of mass. And what that means is it's going to be eight times as dense since the volume is the same for both. Okay. Oh, so I guess I kind of gave the answer there. <laughs> so substance B is eight times as dense as substance A. So anyway, I hope that makes sense. I believe that's the last one. Uh, next time we're going to be talking about pressure a bit. So I hope to see you with that one. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.